There was a time when armed conflict was the domain of warriors and their weapons. But today, civilians, including children, increasingly bear the brunt of conflict, are caught in the crossfire, and are even the direct targets of violence and abuse. Too many children today are living in a world awash with weapons and images of armed violence, turning childhood into an endless nightmare for many. Thousands upon thousands of children are directly involved in conflicts around the world. Some are forced by circumstances to seek revenge, others are driven to join because of poverty and abuse. But the majority are recruited by force or kidnapped. I know this as I was once a child soldier myself. Children's lives are scarred as they witness events like the violent death of a parent or relative. They are forced to flee their homes and often become separated from their families. Children's daily lives are filled with fear amidst ongoing combat and even more complex threats as today the nature of conflict has changed dramatically. It can be prolonged by the race for natural resources and involve organized crime. Unknown numbers have been arbitrarily detained and persecuted. Girls in particular are subjected to rape, domestic violence, sexual exploitation and trafficking. I went to fetch water and when I was almost finished, I felt someone come behind me. I saw that it was somebody in military uniform. He took a stone and stuffed it in my mouth and carried me off into the bushes and then raped me. War violates every right a child has. The right to life, to grow up with a family, to health, to survival and full development, and the right to be protected and nurtured by others. The effect of conflict is real and continues to happen even as I speak to you. I live through the brutality of this madness in Sierra Leone. Millions of others around the world have seen their childhood disappear as well. I was carrying food to my brother when I stepped on a mine and lost my leg. I was with the, the general and then, because anywhere he goes, I follow. Anything he want me to do, I did. My house is like a cemetery without any happiness. The world cannot accept this devastation of children's lives as an inevitable side effect of war. In reality, Children have become targets as a result of conscious and deliberate decisions made by adults, and it has to stop. In 1996, the United Nations adopted a landmark report by Grasse Michel on the impact of armed conflict on children. This journey has also given me hope. I have seen how concern for children in these situations can present new opportunities to confront the problems that cause their suffering. I was privileged to be at the UN on that day, in this very room. A decade later, I stand before you again as part of the review of the progress that has been made, but more importantly, to call on you to commit to the challenges still ahead. Over the past decade, moral outrage has driven lots of progress in the protection of children. Yet, there remain many challenges. The international community has adopted a full body of laws, norms, and frameworks with regard to children in armed conflict. But unfortunately, these are often ignored. What we need is implementation and greater mobilization to end impunity for those who violate children's rights. We need to work for universal compliance Children's needs need to be prioritized before, during, and after conflict, and they must be incorporated in all peacemaking and peacebuilding operations. We must ensure special recovery and long-term reintegration programs for children back into their communities. The impact of armed conflict on children exacerbates the problems of poverty, illiteracy, and child mortality. It also prevents the achievement of the world's development goals. We must act now.
Mr. President, we are dying every day. Please help stop the war for the sake of the children. Every person on the planet has a role of absolute importance to play. So does every government, every religious leader, every member of the United Nations, and every child. Children and young people are not only our future, they should be recognized today as key actors who can participate in finding ways to bring peace to all. The capacity and resilience of the children should never be underestimated, nor that of their families or communities. I believe in unity amongst people. If we find unity, peace will come and the country will be prosperous. And when there is peace, we can accomplish a lot. After two years in captivity, I see today that education is wealth. Above all, we must do more to prevent conflict and build peace. But talking is not enough. The youth of the world are ready, but we need all of your contributions. Please do not belittle the importance of your participation in helping us to walk toward a world free of conflict and suffering for all children.